what's up high levelers in this video i'm going to show you how can you transform your go high level dashboards from looking like this to looking like this you ready let's dive in all right so i'm in one of my sub accounts and i clicked on dashboard right here and when we click on this blue icon you will see that we have an option to add a new dashboard now just a heads up that this feature is only available for the 497 plans so you need to be on a 497 plan for go high level in order to access this feature now you can see that this is the default dashboard that is pretty much applicable on all these sub accounts for your go high level account now this is pretty good but it's very generic and as different businesses have different needs and they would have different kind of reporting structures that would really help help that business owner or their clients. So it's better that we can customize the dashboard space on our needs so that we can get the information we need in just a few steps. So with that goal in mind, let's go ahead and build a dashboard. For this example, I'm going to build this dashboard for a chiropractor. So I would call it chiropractor sales dashboard. And then you have a couple of options here. So you can either create this for your own cell. In that case, you will select the private option right here or you can select for everyone if you want that all the users in this sub account can access the same dashboard. So for now, because this is a test one, I'm gonna go ahead with private right here and click on confirm. Now, right off the bat, you will see that there's nothing right here and you can see Go High Level suggesting a few things here, which you can use like conversion rate, opportunity value and stuff like that. So if you click on that, it will automatically add that widget right here. It's very basic, it's just like creating those widget layouts for your iPhone. So it's very intuitive and we'll just dive into some things real quick. So let me just remove this from now and I'll talk about how I created the dashboard you saw in the start of the video so that you can see how you can build something similar for your business as well. So what I'm gonna do is click on add widget right here and then we have a few options to choose from. So the first thing we have is widgets where you can select different widget types like this is of course all, but you can also filter by numeric, donut, or you know you can do graph or lines. And then from here, you can actually select the widget. So let's say this is the context count. So if you click on this right now, it will actually give you the total number of contacts in your account. So for now, my goal is that this dashboard reflects a ROI picture for this chiropractic practice. So let's say this is Dave's chiropractic. I wanna see at any given time, how many leads do I have? How many of them are converting to appointments? how many are showing up and how many of them are converting to deals. So with that being said, I'm gonna build those four widgets and then I'll explain them as I'm building them. So what I'm gonna do is click on this blue button right here, click on contacts and then click on contacts count. Now you will see here that I have to add a title here and I want to see total Facebook leads because we run Facebook for this client. So I'm just gonna select that right here. And then we also have this option for condition. So if I select that and add in a condition which says tag is, lead Facebook. Now this is a tag we have for all the leads that are coming through Facebook just as a way to differentiate. Of course, this can be different for you. So go ahead and choose the one that makes sense for you. So I'll just go ahead and click on save right here. And then it tells you right off the bat that how many leads do I have. Now we'll get into the date ranges and all that stuff later on. For now, I'm just gonna build out the basic structure and then I'll explain you how does it work with the date ranges and how can you check for different intervals. So this is the total Facebook leads. Now my goal is to also add the appointments thing. So what I'll do is go right here, click on appointments. Now I want to do the appointment count. You can do different widget types if you want, uh, but I really like the count one. So I'll just select this one right here and I will just name the title as appointments booked and then just hit save. For now, we're just doing very simple stuff, nothing fancy. And you can hold and drag this just to make this even just like this. And that's, that's it. Then I'm going to add another one, which will be appointment showed because we already have appointments booked. So the next step is we know, okay, how many of these actually showed up. So again, I'll select appointment count. You can also choose from opportunities because you might have an opportunity stage, which is showed up, right? So it varies based on your workflow. For now, in my case, I'm gonna go ahead with appointments count again, and then click on conditions right here. And the condition is going to be status is showed, right? So it will only reflect the appointment showed up. I might have to rename this. So what I'll do is showed up. I'm just gonna rename that real quick and I'm just gonna drag this real nice. So we have total Facebook leads, appointments booked and then showed up. And now the last thing that I wanna add is how many deals were actually closed. So in order to do that, I'm gonna click on add widget right here. So I'm just gonna click on opportunities and then click on one opportunities because this is where we track, okay, how many deals have we closed and we can say deals closed or programs close, whatever makes sense for you, and then just drag this right here. So now we have a high level picture of, okay, how many leads we have, 
how many appointments we booked, how many showed up, and how many deals were closed. So this basically gives you like a numerical value right off the bat and you can see, okay, you know, this account is doing good or this account is doing bad. Now we're also going to add another thing, which is what is the value of the deals that are being closed? So in order to do that, I'm gonna click on add widget right here and then I'm going to select one opportunity value. So what it will give me is the value of the deals that were under the program closed stage so that we can say, okay, you know, this is the ROI we generated. So you can also add that right here. And then you can add more general items like maybe you want to add conversion rate. So that's already pre-made by GoHighLevel. Well, you can go right here and the general, click on conversion rate and it will give you the conversion rate. And then if I click on add widget again, you can go to general again, maybe add the funnel based breakdown. Now there's another category that you can add. So what you can do is if you go to add widget again, go to object, you can also embed widgets or iframes. So if you go here and let's say you want to embed a Google sheet right here, maybe it has an SOP for your sales team, or it is something that's helpful across the board and you want to link it to the dashboard, you can easily do that just like this. Now this is a link to one of our evaluation sheets. So what I'll do is just add in the title. I already embedded the link right here. And now you can see that it is also available here. You can drag it down, move it around, you know, scale it based on your preferences. So that can be easily done. So once the changes have been saved, you can see that we have all these widgets right here. Now these widgets are completely dynamic. So if you do change the date ranges from here, these will update based on the data that's available there. And that's the difference. So if I go back into the edit dashboard here again, and I click on one of these widgets, so under advanced settings, we have an option which is date range override. So what it basically does is it doesn't link that widget to the main date range of the dashboard because when you change that date range above in the main dashboard, it updates every widget. But if you don't want to do that, if you want to override for some reason, you can actually select that right here and then hit save. And whenever you make changes in this date range right here, that widget will not update because you already override that based on a custom setting. So that option is available to you. But in most cases, you can leave that as default so that most of these widgets are updating dynamically and then you can get a good data report for any given date range at any time you want. Now, once you're satisfied with the dashboard, you can actually preview that right here. Of course, if you selected it to private, only you would be able to see it. But if you selected everyone in the start, everybody would be able to see that in your sub account. And you can easily find that if you click on the blue button right here, you can also pin it if you have a lot of dashboards. So it will be pinned right here under my dashboard. And this will give you a quick glance and make sure that you get your finger on the pulse for each sub account that you have. All right, so that was all about it. I hope this video helped you understand on how can you create custom dashboards as per your needs. Now, this can really help you to check your account's performances with a quick glance, maybe for your clients. And if you do SaaS, your customers are going to love this feature. So go ahead, experiment, and build your dream dashboard today.